So what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you see a shark? Fear? Destruction? But what if changing the way we see these creatures could actually help us in the fight to preserve our oceans? Swim with sharks is not exactly one of those things that I left pending in my checklist as a reporter. But we're doing it to bring attention to the plight of sharks. Millions of sharks, millions, are being killed every single year. And of course, there are many misconceptions about sharks, based probably on movies like Jaws. But the truth is that if you confront human beings with sharks, those who are in danger are the sharks. It's a problem highlighted in the critically acclaimed documentary, Shark Water Extinction. The film follows conservationist Rob Stewart as he investigates the illegal shark fin industry. Stewart tragically drowned while shooting its final scene. My goal is to make people fall in love with sharks. And for that, people need to see a bit of their softer side, a bit of their intelligence, and maybe see a bit of themselves in the sharks. With his film now released around the world, Stewart's legacy is a powerful reminder of the global crisis facing sharks today. Um, in addition to lemon sharks, we have bull sharks. His work continues today through his colleague and fellow activist, Julie Anderson. She runs several nonprofits dedicated to educating people about sharks and saving them. Many people are thinking it is incredibly dangerous what we're doing. Right. You're saying it's incredibly safe. It is, it is. So it's all about respect, right? And obviously, you know, you're getting into the water with a predator. If someone were to tell me, get out in the Serengeti and get in, you know, get onto land with lions, there's no way I would do it. But sharks are just these amazing creatures where they understand that we are not on their menu. And so when they come up to you, you'll see they're curious about you, but they have no interest in actually biting you or eating you or, I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, I have all my fingers, all my toes. I spent hundreds of hours underwater with sharks. And what I would say is, is it's not at all what it seems and it's not dangerous as long as you're respectful. So it seems that sharks are very picky and so let's see the bait. Sharks like it fresh, right? Yes. Yeah. It's very fresh. So uh, what do you what do you do with that? You put, you put it inside a plate, right? And then it's all ready, you know, and we shake the crate at the bottom. Uh -huh. And it puts the sets all over the water pond, the top to the bottom. So this works. This works best. Right. Just a few minutes in, we spot a large female bull shark. I'll admit I was afraid at first, but then I noticed a dynamic, a rhythm in the ocean. She swam peacefully and we grew accustomed to being around each other. I was more afraid of me than, <laughs> than I was of her. So tell me about that relationship that you have with sharks. I saw you diving and then just getting closer. 
Right. And then uh, there was some kind of a rhythm between you and the shark. A little interaction. Yes. And that's the amazing thing. I think most people think that here's like this mindless predator that's going to kill you. And every single shark you meet has a different personality and a different behavior. And, you know, really kind of interacting with them and having those moments to me is extremely special. You, you've seen eye to eye with sharks. I've seen eye to eye with sharks. When you see a, a shark like that, that close, do you actually sense a connection? I do. I do. And I think, you know, most people don't understand that sharks have cognitive abilities better than dolphins. They've got social structures. I mean, these are not mindless creatures. So you can, you can have an interaction. They, they recognize each other. They can recognize people. I mean, there have been proven incidents where they can recognize divers again and again. So to me, it's just to be able to connect with an animal like that, it's amazing. So what's the situation with the shark population? Shark populations are down up to 99% in certain water. 99%. That's a massive number. And why is that? So sharks initially were being finned for shark fin soup. But now what we're finding is, is shark meat is ending up in our products and our pet food. There's a big market right now for shark products. Is it mostly in Asia or is it a problem that we have also in the States? You know, it's really easy to look at Asia and say, okay, well, clearly it's happening over there. But I think every country is responsible. What we don't realize is the U.S. is one of the biggest shark fishing nations in the world. We're one of the top three. We're right after Indonesia and Taiwan, which is crazy. So while a lot of shark fin is being consumed over in Asia, we're also creating an issue from fishing sharks and then also consuming shark. Is there something that we can do about it? You know, there's absolutely things that we can do about it. Right now there's a bill um, that's being proposed to Congress and it's to ban the import and export of shark fin. And that would be, we would be the first country in the world to do that. And there's also a similar bill in Canada. And states have started passing fin-free legislation which makes shark fin an illegal substance as well. So there's definitely some legislation, but at the end of the day it's also about enforcement. And I think it's also about consumer awareness. What happens if we don't do anything about it. I think what happens if we don't do anything about shark populations and protecting sharks is you're going to see sharks disappear from the oceans. Scientists are predicting within 40 years you're going to see some of the larger sharks like the bull sharks disappear from the oceans, which is just absolutely insane. And I think, you know, most people say like, like, like the one we just saw. Exactly. Uh -huh. So what? You know, the only good shark is a dead shark, but love them or hate them, we need them in our ocean because there's nothing extra in nature and they've kept our oceans healthy for 450 million years. We've got to have them. Right, let, let's say that we meet mm -hmm. again in, in 10 years. Are you hopeful? I try to be hopeful, right? I mean, we have little wins and we have things that we can celebrate and hopefully this legislation passes in the U.S. and in Canada. Um, but I also have seen a huge degradation, not just in shark populations, but in what's going on in our oceans in general since I started diving 20 years ago. And from my perspective, I mean, we all, we've all got a responsibility to the ocean and we can all do something to help it. Do you think we're making a difference, that you're making a difference? I do think we're making a difference, and I see it every day in people that we touch. And, you know, I mean, we've been doing this long enough to really be able to see the impact that every single person can have on what they're passionate about, and in my case, sharks. But I think what we're doing too, in terms of getting out there and showing people a different side of sharks, that is critical because we're fed all of this horrible stuff about, you know, the, the teeth and the blood and everything else about sharks, right? So we learn to fear them. So trying to save them is nearly impossible. Here we are out there trying to save like the Ebola virus or something because when people figure out, wow, 150 million sharks are killed a year, they stop and then they say, so what? I hate sharks. And that's where we need to change perspectives. And I think that's why it's so important to show people a different side of sharks.